Happiness is disturbing and also fucking hilarious. I don't ever remember a movie making me feel so repulsed and yet amused. Stay tuned to the end to find out everything that happens in what's considered one of the most disturbing movies out there. Welcome to Dumb Down, the show where we summarize movies in hopes of understanding them better. Today we have a great one, 1998's Happiness, directed by Todd Salons and starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Happiness follows the Jordan family. The family consists of Lenny and his wife Mona. They have three adult daughters, Joy, Helen, and Trish. Trish is married to Bill and um, we'll get back to this motherfucker. Everyone in this family pretends to be fine but are all fucking miserable. Lenny and Mona are about to get divorced after 40 years of marriage. You know, I just wish you had done this 20 years ago. Now I'll have to get another fucking facelift. Joy can't seem to find any joy in her life. Her passion is music but that isn't making her any money and her call center job isn't fulfilling enough. Helen is a self-centered writer that deep inside knows that she completely sucks. I'm no good. And she obviously takes her frustrations out on her family. Ugh, I hate Saturday nights. Everybody wants me, Joy. You have no idea. And Trish is also a fucking asshole. She thinks the world revolves around her, and she likes to pretend that her life and family are perfect, when actually nothing is perfect at all. Mainly because she's married to this asshole, Bill. Oh, Bill. Why, Bill? But we'll get back to this motherfucker. Joy was seeing some guy from work until she decided to dump him, which made him kind of lose it. You think I'm shit? Your shit. Until the day you die, you, not me, will always be shit. But that's not all because she later finds out that the breakup drove him to suicide. So Joy decides to get a job teaching at an immigrant education center to maybe find some joy in helping others. But on her first day, she gets treated like shit because they miss the old teacher. We want Masha! We want Masha! We want Masha! We want Masha! Which makes her cry. Joy spends the majority of this movie crying or making bad decisions. Helen is a successful writer. Everyone loves her despite her being a complete C-word, but she is unsatisfied with life because no one seems to like her for just her. They just like her work and success. Meanwhile, Helen's neighbor is obsessed with her, but can't bring himself to talk to her. I want to tie her up. I want to pump her. It was so hard that my shoots right through her and that my squirts out of her mouth. He also happens to love calling random numbers and jerking off when women answer the phone. Then one day he calls Helen and tells her this. You think you are fucking something, but you are fucking nothing. You are a black hole, and I'm gonna fuck you so bad you're gonna be coming out of your ears. Helen was never treated this way before, which kind of turns her on, and she becomes fascinated with the random man that called her. Obviously, she has no idea that it's her neighbor. Trisha's life is perfect. According to her, she loves putting her sisters down and pretending that she's better than them. I always thought that you would never amount to much, that you would end up alone, without a career or anything. You know, I mean, really, it's, it's what we all thought. And she doesn't stop there. She has no issues telling her 11-year-old son, Billy, things like this. Billy, I want you to know something. If you ever even think of doing drugs and end up dying in a hospital, I disown you. That's how strongly I feel about it. But her life is about to get worse because she's married to this asshole. Bill has a fascination with boys. He pretty much falls in love with his son's friend, Johnny. So much so that one night at a sleepover, Bill decides to drug his entire family, put them to sleep, and then he also drugs Johnny, and then he, um, well, um, you know, uh, Okay, okay, we'll get back to this motherfucker. Lenny is unsatisfied with his marriage. He wants to separate from his wife but refuses to get a divorce. He tries a couple things out and even gets some new old lady pussy. But he realizes that he just doesn't feel anything anymore. He's just numbed with life. I don't feel anything. Brought to you by Blue Chew. Do it and do it! And nothing seems to satisfy him. He just simply wants to be alone. His wife, Mona, is trying to cope with Lenny's decision. She goes over to a realtor and tries to find herself a new apartment away from Lenny. But the realtor sits at a computer and decides to subscribe to Dumb Down, and so should you. Joy's teaching job is not going so great. The emptiness she had in her old job has returned. And one day, while she's crying on her way to the train station, one of her students named Vlad offers her a ride home. Once outside her house, he kisses her, and she asks him to go inside. She is shy at first, but gets super wet when she sees him playing guitar and singing waiting for someone to sing me her song eventually they get it on after getting his dick wet vlad decides to steal her guitar and, and some other things on his way out the next morning she's feeling great 
she got dicked down and she still feels like Vlad cares about her for some reason. But all of this comes crashing down when Vlad's wife attacks her at school. <laughs> I just love a good cat fight. One day, Billy is super upset because all the kids at school are talking about <laughs> and he doesn't know what that is. So he asks his dad about it. Bad move, Billy. Run. Wrong guy to ask. His dad explains to him what it is. He even asks Billy if he wants him to show him, but Billy declines his offer. Thank God. Throughout the movie, his dad would ask Billy every so often if he successfully masturbated, but Billy would always reply no. Billy also makes the mistake of telling his dad that one of his classmates was left home alone as his parents were out of town. So one night, Bill drives over to his son's classmate's house and, well, you know, um, fuck this guy. We'll get back to this motherfucker. Helen wants to meet her secret phone caller because she wants him to fuck her, but he's too shy to go over her house until one day he grows a pair of balls and goes over. But remember how he treated her on the phone? I'm gonna f*** you so bad you're gonna be f***ing out of your ears. Well, he's unable to do that in person. So after he walks into her apartment and sits awkwardly next to her. You're not my type. No. Joey continues to make bad decisions. She goes over to Vlad's house to apologize to his wife. His wife is now sporting a brand new black eye, probably courtesy of Vlad. But Joey ends up being played into paying $400 to get her shit bag that Vlad had stolen. Eventually, Johnny's parents find out that he's been raped, but Johnny doesn't remember anything that's happened to him. Hey, Joe, what's up? How's Johnny doing? You're a dead man. The cops go over to question Bill about Johnny and Billy's other classmate. One day, Billy confronts his dad and tells him how everyone in school is calling him a serial rapist. And Bill decides to be brutally honest with his son. I fucked them. Would you do it again? Yes. Would you ever fuck me? No. I jerk off instead. Hold up my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Holy fuck. Now after this, we need to cleanse our palate for a little bit. So, here's puppies. Now we cut to six months later. The entire family, minus Bill, who's probably in prison, find themselves in Florida. All of them sit at a table more miserable than they were at the beginning of the movie. At the same time, Billy finds himself in the balcony, staring at some Florida titties by the pool. As he plays with himself, he's finally able to finish. And the movie ends with this line. I, I came. Obviously, this movie deals with some serious topics. Happiness is widely known as one of the most disturbing movies out there. But unlike other movies, the reason it's disturbing is because of its very real subject matter. The movie does a great job in making you feel very uneasy and uncomfortable during most of the scenes with Bill. But the writer-director Todd Salons really does a great job of balancing the very touchy subject with the ridiculousness of the family. It knows when to play up the comedy and when to be serious. And it definitely knows how to disturb you. That's it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe or don't. I don't care. Just enjoy the video. Later.